An Analysis of James Baldwin's Sonny's Blues James Baldwin lived from 1924 to 1987. An African American, he was born to a large family in New York City. His stepfather, a preacher, was very cruel to him. At age 14, James became a local sensation by becoming one of the youngest known preachers in the area at a local Pentecostal church in Harlem. However, he left this after he finished high school. By his college years, he was less interested in religion and more interested in literature, which his stepfather opposed. By the 1950s and 1960s, he became an important voice for African American equality. In 1956, he wrote the novel Giovanni's Room, which takes place in Paris and dealt with a gay relationship, likely semi-autobiographical. This was one of the first major novels to deal with gay life. Baldwin himself was gay, but but, but he scared away some civil rights activists by dealing openly with gay identity. Because he was such an important voice for racial equality, some felt he was distracting from or hurting that image by also being known as openly gay. Many who fought for racial equality were against basic respect for gay people. Baldwin saw this as hypocritical as an, and an example of how discrimination creates a cycle of prejudices that do not remain solely focused on one group and that don't go away very easily. Eldridge Cleaver of the Black Panthers stated that Baldwin's writing displayed an agonizing total hatred of blacks. Cleaver saw Baldwin's writing as not seeking to enhance black equality or black power, but instead revealing people's problems. He saw this as self-hating. Cleaver's dis dislike for Baldwin was likely at least partly motivated by the fact that Baldwin was openly gay. In 1964, Baldwin wrote the play Blues for Mr. Charlie, dealing explicitly with the civil rights movement. It was seen as very important to the cause of getting the general public to talk about issues of racial equality. Throughout his life, he continued to fight for equal rights for all, including the cause of gay equal rights. He died in 1987. Social Commentary in Sonny's Blues Within this story, one can see Baldwin pointing out the inequalities of race. We see this in the narrator's discussion of education. We also see it in his discussion of his students coming to realize that the dreams they could accomplish were limited. Within the story, the narrator says, These boys now were living as we'd been living then. They were growing up with a rush, and their heads bumped abruptly against the low ceiling of actual possibilities. Here Baldwin suggests that anger or rage are some of the possible reactions to this recognition of the limited possibilities. However, Baldwin also points out how the African American community, there were, among the African American community, there were elements that made this oppression worse and partially self-imposed. The most obvious example of this is the drug, drug e epidemic of which Sonny is but one victim. Baldwin found music to be an important outlet for creative and spiritual expression, particularly for black men. He said, I grew up with music, you know, much more than any other language. In a way, the music I, I grew up with saved my life. Later in my life, I met musicians, and it was a milieu I moved in much more than the literary milieu, because when I was young, there wasn't any, so that I watched and learned from the various musicians on the streets. Within Sonny's Blues, Baldwin uses music as a means to allow for communication of feelings and ideas that cannot be expressed clearly in words. Note that in the final scene, it is Sonny's music that ultimately brings the narrator to a sense of understanding and even personal awakening. According to C.W.E. Bigsby, editor of The Black American Writer, the central point of conflict in much of Baldwin's writings is to show the job of ethnic renewal lies in individual fulfillment rather than racial separatism or political revolution. The narrator in Sonny's Blues recognizing that in get, recognizes that in getting out of the utter poverty of his life in Harlem, he left his family behind. He even uses the analogy of an animal who must gnaw off its own leg to free itself from a trap. As a mature adult, however, he now realizes that doing this harmed both he and his brother. In the story's final scene, hearing his brother express his feelings through music brings the narrator an overwhelming feeling of connection with his family 
and with a longer line of ancestry that he'd separated himself from. The final lines suggest that this kind of awakening is necessary for personal and communal renewal. 